Hi, I'm Tommy from AmateurLogic.tv, November 5 Zulu, November Oscar. Today we're going to set up one of the fairly new ICOM repeaters. This is the 70 centimeter one, uh, the RP4010V Victor. It's a really sweet machine. It's got an integrated controller. Uh, it's got a lot of connectivity. There's an optional LTE unit that you can get for it. It's got uh, five Ethernet ports, uh, one for connectivity to the gateway computer and some others for interconnectivity between other repeaters. If you have the whole ICOM stack, you can get a 1200 and a 144 megahertz unit as well and connect those all together. It also supports the ID RP2C controller. So uh, the power is uh, selectable. There's a switch on the front right here. For low power, it's 2.5 watts. High power is 25 watts without any uh, external power for it. Runs off of a uh, 12-volt uh, power supply. One of the sweet things that makes this one a little bit unique for D-Star is it supports mixed mode, D-Star and FM. And we'll probably play around with that sometime in another video, but uh, it's really a, a nice feature to have. We're going to need to set it up. I've got a computer set up running CentOS 7, and I've got all of the ICOM software that was provided to me from a link from ICOM. And it's sitting there on the computer ready to go. But first of all, we needed to install the ID RP3 utility software on my Windows computer here. Now, I've already installed the ID RP3 software, as you can see. Before you hook that up to your repeater, from your computer to your repeater, make sure you go to the ICOM site, download the USB driver for this repeater so you don't have driver problems. Before we set the repeater up, we need to make sure the firmware is up to date. Now, I got a link from ICOM and downloaded the latest version. I put an SD card in, the repeater set up the file system on it, and I put it into my computer and put the latest firmware in the firmware folder that was created, and we put it back into the repeater. Now to update the firmware, we need to hold down the reset button using the paper clip and turn the power on at the same time. The repeater is going to go into maintenance mode. And you can tell because of the blinking there. Now to do the firmware update, actually this mode is interesting. You can do different things to it. You can save the settings to an SD card, load them. But in this instance, we're going to do the firmware. So we need to tap the power button. And it should flash pretty fast. There it goes. And it looks like we're done. So let's go check it. That should be version 1.12. Okay, I'm using the utility software IDRP3. I had that pre-installed. But let's check the version number for the firmware. So we'll go into Program, Information. And we'll scroll down. We can see it's on 1.12. So my firmware did work. Uh, previously it was 1.11. So I'm going to go into the common section here we need to set up everything our receive frequency is going to be 447.075 dds for data we don't do that on the 70 centimeter version this is where the sweetness is right here we're going to go from dv mode into mix mode so we can do fm or d star like we mentioned previously i'm going to leave the lag time alone we'll put our call sign in w 5AXC, that's 5, 6, 7, and we want to be module Bravo, so we put that in the 8th position. Incidentally, if you don't put it in, it'll assign an A to you and put it in the right spot, so you can always go back and just change that to the B if you're doing the 70 centimeter. Two meters would typically be uh, module C. Squatch level, we'll leave all that alone for the moment. We don't have an external preamp. Let's go over to Digital Repeater. Gateway, we're going to use our gateway server that we have set up, and we'll take a look at that shortly. The That's the IP address, the standard one, so I would encourage you to use that one. And monitor, don't have. Simple gateway is for Japan. I believe that's all we're going to need in here. Analog Repeater. We'll leave most of these on default for the time being. We're going to use a CW for the ID, 
And I think most of these will be okay, but we do want a tone. So I'm going to go down to signaling receive, and I'll, I don't want you to be able to get into my repeater without a 77 hertz tone. So we'll set that up. Network. Uh, I've got the second NIC in our computer set uh, for 172.16.0.1. So we need to set up the network. So I'm not going to use DHCP. I'm going to set this to off. Just take the defaults here. So that's on the same subnet as our other NIC in our sec in our computer. And I'll leave the ports alone as well. NTP will let that get the time from the uh, government there. Set the offset. We're in a minus six area. So let's go ahead and save these settings. Save as. And I'll just call these repeater. Let's write them to the repeater. Go to program, write. Yes, I am very sure. And it was successful. Well, let's try it out. We've got a dummy load set up on the back here. And I'm going to see if George is listening. W5JDX, M5ZNO. N5 Zeno, this is W5 JDX on the W5 AX module B baseball repeater. Oh, very cool. Actually, it's mixed mode repeater. So let's try FM. Okay, DV worked. So we just switched over to FM. Let's see if the mixed mode function works. W5 JDX, N5 Zeno. N5ZNO, W5JX, and Glorious Analog. <laughs> All right, looks like we're in business. N5ZNO. W5JX, clear. The initial test was successful. Let's go to the Linux computer. We need to install our gateway software. Now, I already downloaded it. The instructions that were provided to me from ICOM, there's a, a sheet that you'll get, PDF file. It's actually available on the internet. You can download it. But I will go to my temp folder. Actually, I'm going to run this in the terminal. Okay, we'll go to our... Let's go check our software. We've got CD... CMP. And we can you can see we've got our G3 installer script already here. And we've got the RPMs that were pro provided to me from ICOM already in the temp folder, which is where they recommend to set them up from. Before we run the installer, there's some ports that need to be opened up. The, the, I'm going to put the list on the screen right here. So make sure you've got those open because it's going to need to connect to the U.S. Trust servers and back and forth and do some talking like that. So those definitely have to be open. Next up, we need to run the G3 installer. There's some options that you can do. You can skip the fork test, uh, various and sorted things. If you got a different IP address set up, you can do that. But I've got mine's all set up for the default. Let me show you the setup before we run it. We'll go to System Tools, Settings, Network. Now I've got two NICs in here which is required. One goes to the internet which is that one. This is the one that's hooked up to the repeater. I've got it set up per the instructions to 172.16.0.20. So that's on the same subnet you saw us set up on the uh, repeater for earlier. So if you have a different one, you can use some of these command line parameters for this installer script to set that different. But I, I took the default, took the easy way out. Now I've already put the RPMs that I got from ICOM over here in the temp folder as instructions ask. I've got my G3 installer script. So let's go ahead and give it a try. Let's run the install script. So I'm going to run it under sudo 
dot forward slash g3 underscore staller into my password and off we go installing the required packages Air install and beef star. Check this log for more details. So that is G3 installation. It appears I ran the old version of the RPM instead of the most current one. So that was my mistake. Well, we can take care of that though. And your gateway call sign. W. Five A X C It failed to find the gateway, so I had to run it again, giving it the IP address this time. Here I'll just hit enter and it will take the call sign that I entered previously. Now we got to enter the keyword for creating a backup of the G2 software, but we don't have G2 software on here, so I'm just going to do that and leave it blank. Register an administrator. Tommy. Enter my email. Yes, I am sure. The information will be registered. G3 installation is complete. We made it through the install script. We had to put the coordinates for the location of the repeater. We had to put the frequencies in. We only have a 70 centimeter, so that's the only one we entered. We hit enter but for the others, it left them blank. And we had to put the frequency in the offset. And we made it to the end of the script, and we need to hit enter to reboot the server. So hold on to your hat. During that process, we also had to enter an email address and a password for the server administrator for the U.S. Trust System. I hope you found this video useful. As you can see, things don't always go perfect every time. There are ways to correct behind yourself. Check the command line switches. Make sure you've got the most current software. And just check the documentation. I hope to hear your system online soon. 73.